have a husband and two sons, which is hard work, as any of you will know, that have husbands and two sons, three sons or whatever. And they say, oh, don't nag. So I say, women don't nag, they motivate. <laughs> and my husband, Alan, says he always knew he'd marry his miss right, because he just never realised my first name was always. <laughs> <laughs> and we sometimes argue about religion. He thinks he's God and I don't. <laughs> and he's never learned to drive, in my opinion. He says that housework won't kill me, so why take the chance? <laughs> Another thing he said was that PMS is called that because mad cow disease was already taken. <laughs> so he once took me to York for a romantic weekend and we were down in the breakfast bar in the morning and uh, there was an American couple sitting next to us and an English couple and the American guy said to his wife, pass the sugar, sugar. And the English guy said, pass the honey, honey. <laughs> I said, see, why do you no say these nice things to me? He says, gaze the milk, a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving home from that weekend. And we've seen this massive big field of pigs. You know the great big ones rolling about in the muck? And he said, hmm, relatives of yours. <laughs> I said, yes, they're my in-laws. <laughs> See if you die before me, I'm going to put in your headstone. Here lies my wife, cold as ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked over at him and I said, Here lies, if I die first, if you die first, sorry, if you die first, if you die first I'm going to put in your gravestone. Here lies my husband, stiff at last. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, single women are slimmer than married women. Because when single women come home from a night out, they go to the fridge. And if they don't find anything interesting, they go to their bed. But when married women come home from a night out, they go to bed. And if they don't find anything interesting, they go to the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> a young girl was going out with her boyfriend and her granny, who lived with the family, said, you cannot go out like that, young lady. That blouse is almost see-through. She says, chill, granny. I want to show off my rosebuds. So, the next night, the, the boyfriend was coming for dinner. And the granny comes down the stair with a see-through blouse. <laughs> and the granddaughter says, Granny, there is no way you can wear that blouse. My boyfriend's come for dinner. And she says, chill, kid. If you can show off your rose butts, I can show off my hanging baskets. <laughs> well, it's good to hear laughter, and they say it's the best medicine. I hope you've enjoyed your night. Um, we have a, a county lunch now instead of a county dinner, um, which seems to work all right, but um, I think it was decided after a, we had a speaker one night who was shown his slides of train journeys in mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I was fair annoyed I couldn't hear her for the snoring. <laughs> well, as my good friend Susan McVicker always says, leave them wanting more. And she was an anaesthetist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everybody for putting up with me and have a great evening and safe home. <laughs>